feel free to start whenever whenever you feel like it. I'll, I'll start the game up. It takes a sec to initialize the galaxy. So the Drifter, the uh, Kickstarter funded Steam green lit space thing. It's a, <laughs> it's a it's a space trading game uh, in the style of Elite and Privateer, kind of. There are other games that kind of influence it, but that's those are kind of the core ones. Okay. Uh, I have to apologize for my voice. The conference has been exceptionally hard on. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, the game's been coming along. It just recently launched on Early Access on Steam, which is good. I, I, it's helped me develop the game to its potential. Um, I'm hoping that it'll be on the App Store sometime this year, maybe even before or by the summer. Uh, but it's always been when it's ready, basically. Uh, the game is an open-world sandbox game. Uh, it has a galaxy of 20,000 star systems. Uh, so now, is this going to be random for each person? Like, is it generated like a Minecraft world, or...? Like uh, actually, uh, the base game is... My idea is everyone will have the same seed. Okay. I think there's going to be an option to allow people to generate their own galaxy. But the real core of the game is there's going to be an exploration element okay. where people can, like, share things that they found. Okay. So it's, like, big enough that... People can find like. Well, enough. so you, you can zoom in on yeah. any of these planets here. Yes. So these are all star systems, and this shows um, these are all jump routes that you can take between the different uh, stars. So if you click on a star, you can view the layout of the star system and its uh, government, the general safety level. Like I want to have it so people can choose the. Uh, the path they want to take in the game. Like, if someone wants to play the game completely, uh, like, pa like, pacifistically, they can totally not get into combat and they can just buy, like, a big freighter and, like, jump between all the safe worlds and trade stuff. Yeah, kind of like, uh, I did that with freelancers, like, make money and then buy, like, cool shit. Yeah. You know, so. So, like, the, uh, there are other more dangerous worlds. You can become a bounty hunter. You can become a pirate, like you can like find friendly ships mining in uh, asteroid belts and blow them up and take all their ore. Cool. You, you know. Well, can we like do a mission real quick, or how long does your typical mission take? Uh, a mission can take a few minutes. Yeah, well, let's let's go to the space station here, and we'll grab a mission. So inside each of these jump points, you have the ability to fly around like this. Yes, okay. yeah. Each system is randomly generated, and it has different types of planets. But the actual arrangement of that galaxy, everyone will be the same. Uh, no, like no. I'm trying the, to figure out like where the crossover is between like everyone will have the same experience, and everything will be different for each person. No, uh, like the core game, everything will be the same. Like okay. it'll be the same star systems using the same like the. It's all procedurally generated using algorithms, but it all uses the same numbers to okay. like see that generation and there'll be like um, space cops you know if you try and bust somebody up in a safe system they'll come after you so this is all placeholder stuff obviously yeah this right? is uh, like I've been focusing on the core gameplay more than the uh, the space station interiors but I've got an artist that I was able to hire as part like after I did the Kickstarter right and in addition, like, he did, like, new ship models and made the space stations look a lot better. Uh, we're working on, like, 3D interiors for the space stations. It'll still be, like, a fixed camera, but, like, in Privateer, cool. like, it shows people walking around and little vehicles and stuff like that. So it just feels like you're actually there. Cool. I think that helps with the immersion. So I'm just going to go to the mission office. This is a pretty close system. This is a retirement party is a bit of a euphemism. We're, we're going to help someone retire, basically. 
All right. So I'm going to expect that. Next. Hopefully I've got enough. Oh, this is going to take a sec because it's waiting for a ship to uh, dock. The, the um, space stations actually have like a docking control system. So we can actually just skip that and uh, I'm gonna go to my mission log. And that is in Helix. So I'm just gonna find the system. It's very targeted to game developers. So why do you have to search for this instead of there just being a link inside of the... Uh, there will be a link. This is just... We'll out route. This is actually going to take a minute, so we might... Might be unfortunate. Um, I apologize. I'm... I need to get jump fuel for my ship. Oh. We'll take a, uh, a minute. I, I don't know, maybe we can... We can do something else if you want. Like, is there anything we can do inside of this little system? Uh, we can go and check out the asteroid field. Maybe we can find a miner or something to take stuff from. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Just going to wait till I'm away from the station. The slipstream drive is a fast travel. Which is good. I mean, they're not, the systems are not realistic in their size, but they're still pretty big. Like yeah, I mean, you, you can't have realistic space in video game for it to be fun. I mean, well, that's the, the thing. Like, some, some people look at it and they're like, well, that's, you know, the distances are real, but I mean, it's like, the more you get to real, like, you still have to make conceits to, um, like, basically the fun that you can have in the game. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I'm crashing to this. So where are we going now? I'm just going into this uh, asteroid field. Oh, I hit that. Instead of finding a poorly armed and defenseless uh, miner who's going to try and get away from us now. I suppose games like this are really hard for you to demo because it's like you can do so much that it's like what do we what do we do what yeah. do we focus on for this nope. thing that's kind of the problem with games like this too because I remember like Freelancer I loved on my PC but it took me like I feel like a week or two before I like had any idea of what I should be doing oh yeah it's I just mean, so it's easy like... to just like dick off and like, I don't know I'm going to shoot some guys in an asteroid field nope He's only he's, he's only armed with mining lasers, so that's not uh, going to be very effective. So, do you actually have to warp to the different systems, or if you're like really insistent, could you actually just like set this crap on autopilot and like uh, just I, let it go for a few days and get somewhere else? Like, how how crazy is that? Uh, it's the expanse of it basically is will you'll need like the ability to sort of auto jump between systems and things like that. But uh, part of it is trying to balance between like making life easy for somebody playing the game and still making it feel like they're doing right, exactly. something. So that, that's for the, for the developer to know, um, like, that makes sense. Sort of, yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I was just curious about stuff, like, like as a as a developer, if you build in the capability to like if someone just you know turned their slipstream drive on or whatever, set the iPad down and just came back like next week, you know, like if you could potentially fly to like the next system that you would typically jump for, you know what I'm saying? Like where you skip like the jump system? Yeah. Um, I think like there will be a lot of sort of autopilot for just the sort of 
boring stretches, but I kind of, like, again, that's my job, basically, to make the game interesting in between all the, the really exciting bits. But I mean, in, you know, uh, he's full of things. So you just pick him up by flying through him? Yes. Uh, I'm actually working now on uh, modules for the, the ships. The ships are all customizable. Uh, so you can like set your weapons and your armor and your shields and stuff like that. But there are special like helper modules that. So you have like a tractor beam or something. Yeah, there's like a cargo scoop. Is one I'm, the one I'm testing with now that will attract uh, cargo containers and ore to your ship. Cool. But well, when do you think? Um, so you said a release potentially this year on iOS. Uh, yeah, I like. I mean, it's it's been in development for like two and a half years now, and I want to get it out there. Uh, it's always been, you know, I, I hate giving a potential release date. Cause, right. Yeah. Because you know. especially if you're developing it with like a when it's done sense. You know? Yeah. Like I I totally want to get it out there, and like it feels like it's close. So uh, you know I. It feels good, and like as it, like basically, my goal now is to polish the game up and add more content to it and get it to like a 1.0 stage. Uh, cool. It's it's you know the early access stuff is useful. Right. And that helps get a lot of feedback because I can't really you know you can't really release an unfinished game on the App Store unfortunately, right. yeah. which is you know that's why it's not there yet. Cool. Well, thanks for showing us your uh, where you are now in Drifter. It's been yeah. I'm sure people are curious about it. So. Thank you.